from around the globe. It's the Cube, presenting the innovation for good. Brought to you by Onshape. Okay, welcome back to Innovation for Good. With me is John McElhaney, who is one of the co-founders of Onshape and is now the VP of Strategy at PTC. John, it's good to see you. Thanks for making the time to come on the program. Thanks, Dave. So we heard earlier some of the accomplishments that, that you've made since the acquisition. Uh, how, how has the acquisition affected your strategy? Maybe you could talk about what resources PTC brought to the table that, that allowed you to sort of rethink or evolve your strategy. What can you share with us? Sure. You know, a year ago when, when John and myself met with Jim Heppelman early on as we were, we were pondering sort of joining PTC, uh, one of the things that became very clear is that we had a, a, a very clear shared vision about how we could take the Onshape platform and really extend it for, for all of the, the PTC products, particular sort of their uh, augmented reality, as well as their, their thing works or the IoT business and their product. And so from the very beginning, there was a clear strategy about taking on shape, extending the platform and, and really investing um, pretty significantly on the product development as well as go to market side of things uh, to, to bring on shape out to not only the PTC base, but sort of the broader community at large. So, so, um, so PTC has been a terrific, terrific um, sort of partner as we've, we've gone, uh, gone after this market together. Uh, so we've added a, a lot of resource in the product development side of things, a lot of resource in the go-to-market and customer success and support. So really on many fronts, it's, it's both resources as well as sort of support at the corporate level from, from a strategic standpoint. And then in the field, we've had wonderful uh, interactions with many large uh, enterprise customers as well as the PTC channel. So it's been really a great, uh, a great year. Well, and you think about the, the challenges of, of in your business go, going to SaaS, which you guys, you know, took on that journey, you know, seven, eight years ago. Uh, it, it's not trivial for a lot of companies to make that transition, especially a company that's been around as long as PTC. So, so I, I'm wondering how much, you know, I was just asking you how much what PC, PTC brought to the table. I got to believe you're bringing a lot to the table too, in terms of the mindset, uh, may, may, even things as, as uh, mundane is not the right word, but things like how you compensate salespeople, how you interact with customers, the, the notion of, of, of a service versus a product. I wonder if you could address that. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a really great point. In fact, after we had met Jim last year, John and I, one of the things we walked out in the Seaport area in Boston, and one of the things we sort of said is, you know, Jim really gets what we're trying to do here. And, and part of, let me bring you into the, the thinking early on, part of what Jim talked about is there's lots of, um, you know, install base sort of software that's inside of the PTC base that's helped literally thousands of customers around the world. But the idea of moving to SaaS and all that it entails, both from a technology standpoint, but also a cultural standpoint, like how do you not, not just compensate the salespeople as an example, but how do you think about customer success? In the past, it might have been that you had professional services that you bring out to a customer and help them deploy your solutions. Well, when you're thinking about a SaaS-based offering, it's really critical that you get customers successful with it. Otherwise, you may have churn and, and you know, you, it, it, it'll be very expensive in terms of your business long-term. So you've got to get customers successful with the software in the very beginning. So, it, you know, Jim really looked at Onshape and he said to John and I, from a cultural standpoint, you know, a lot of times companies get acquired and, and they've acquired technology in the past that they integrate directly into, into PTC and then sort of roll it out through their products or, or their, their distribution channel. He said, in some respects, John and John, think about it as we're going to take PTC and we want to integrate it into Onshape <laughs> because we want you to share with us both on the sales side and customer success, on marketing, on operations, you know, all the things, because long-term we believe the world is a SaaS world that the whole industry is going to move to. So really it was sort of an in, in inverse in terms of the thought process related to normal transactions. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. You mentioned churn, churn's the si silent killer of a SaaS company. And, you know, there's a lot of discussion, you know, in the entrepreneurial community, of course you live this, you know, what's the best path? I mean, today you see, you know, you, you watch Silicon Valley, double, double, triple, triple, uh, but but there's a lot of people who believe, and I wonder if you comment this, the best path to, you know, in the X, Y axis, if, if it's, if it's uh, you know, growth on one and retention on the other axis, what's the best way to get to the upper right? Uh, and, and really the, the, the best path is probably to make sure you've nailed, obviously the product market fit, 
but make sure that you can retain customers and then throw gas in the fire. You see a lot of companies, they burn out trying to grow too fast, yeah. but they haven't figured out, you know, that, but there's too much churn. They haven't figured out those metrics. I mean, obviously on shape, you know, you were sort of a pioneer in here. I got to believe you figured out that customer retention before you really, you know, put the pedal to the metal. Yeah. But. Yeah. And, you know, growth, uh, growth can mask a lot of things, uh, but getting, getting customers, you know, especially in the engineering space, nobody goes and sits there and says, tomorrow we're going to go and, 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 you know, put a hundred users on this and, and immediately swap out all of our existing tools. These tools are very rich and deep in terms of capability and they become part of the operational process of how a company designs and builds products. So anytime anybody's actually going through the purchasing process, typically they will run a trial or they'll run a project where they, they look at kind of what, what is this new solution gonna help them do? How are we gonna orient ourselves for success longer term? So for us, you know, getting new customers and customer acquisition is really critical but getting those customers to actually deploy the solution and be successful with it. You know, we like to sort of say the, the marketing or the lead generation and even some of the initial sales, that's sort of like the kindling, but the fire really starts when customers deploy it and get successful with the solution because they bring other customers into the fold. And then of course, if they're successful with it, you know, then in fact, you'll have negative churn, which ironically means growth in terms of your, inside of your install base. Right, and you've seen that with some of the, the emerging you know, SaaS companies where you're, you're actually, you know, when you calculate whatever it's net retention or renewals, it's actually from a dollar standpoint, it's up in the high 90s or even over 100%. So, right. and that's a, a trend we're going to continue to see. I wonder if we could sort of go back uh, and, and when you guys were starting on shape, some of the things that you saw that you were trying to strategically leverage and what's changed you know, today, you know, we were talking, I was talking to John earlier about, you know, yeah. in a way, you kind of, you, you kind of got a blank slate again. It's like doing another startup, you right. know, not obviously you got install base and customers to service, but, but it's a new beginning for you guys. So what are the things that you saw then, you know, cloud and, and SaaS and, and okay, but that's, we've been there, done that. What are you seeing, you know, today? Well, you know, so, so this is a journey, of course, that uh, that Onshape on its own has gone through and had, I'll sort of say, you know, several iterations, both in terms of of uh, of you know how do you how do you get customers, how do you how do you get them successful, how do you grow those customers, and now that we've been part of PTC, the question becomes, okay, one, there's certainly a higher level of credibility that helps us in terms of our, our megaphone is much bigger than it was when we were a standalone company. But on top of that, now figuring out how to work with their channel, with their direct sales force, you know, they have, um, for example, you know, very large enterprises. Well, many of those customers are not going to go and forklift out their existing solution and replace it with, with Onshape. However, many of them do have challenges in their supply chain and communications with contractors and vendors across the globe. And so, you know, finding our fit inside of those large enterprises as they extend out with, with their, their customers is, is a very interesting area that we've really been um, sort of incremental to, to PTC. And then, um, you know, they, they have access to lots of other technology like the IoT business. And now, of course, the augmented reality business that, that we can bring things to bear. For example, in the augmented reality world, they've, they've got something called expert capture. And this is essentially imagine, you know, an AR, a headset that allows you to be able to, to speak to it, but also capture images, still images in video. And you can take somebody who's doing their task and capture literally the steps that they're taking, it's geolocation, and, and from there build steps for new employees to be able to learn and, and understand how to, how, to, how to use that technology to help them do their job better. Well, when they do that, if there's replacement products or variation of, of uh, some of the tools that that they built the original design instruction set for, they now have another version. Well, they have to manage multiple versions. Well, that's what Onshape is really great at doing. And so taking our technology and helping their solutions as well. So it's not only expanding our customer footprint, it's expanding the application footprint in terms of how we can help them and help customers. So that leads me to the TAM discussion. And again, as, as part of your strategist role, uh, how do you think about that? I was just talking to some of your customers earlier about the democratization of, of CAD and, and engineering. You know, I kind of joked 
sort of like citizen engineering. Uh, yeah. But but so that you know the demographics are, are changing, um, the the number of users potentially that can access the products because the it's so much more of a facile experience. How how are you thinking about the total available market? It, it really is a great question. You know, it used to be when you when you sold boxes of software, it was how many engineers are out there, and that's the size of the market. The fact that mattered is now when when you think about access to that that information and that data is simply a pane of glass, whether it's a computer, whether it's a laptop, uh, a, a cell phone, or whether it's a tablet, the, the ability to, to use different vehicles to access information and data expands the capabilities and power of a system to allow feedback and iteration. I mean, one of the, one of the very interesting things is uh, in technology is when you can take something and really unleash it to a larger audience and build you know, purpose-built applications, you can start to iterate and get better feedback. You know, there's the, the classic case in the clothing industry where Zara, you know, is a fast sort of turnaround, uh, agile manufacturer. And there was a great New York Times uh, article written a couple of years ago. My wife's a, a fan of Zara. And I think she justifies any purchases by saying, you know, with Zara, you got to purchase it now. Otherwise, it may not be there the next time you, you, you go back to the store. They, they had some people in a store in New York that had this women's throw kind of covering shawl. And they said, well, it would be great if we could have this little clip here so we can hook it through or something. And they sent the note back to, to the factory in Spain. And literally two weeks later, they had you know 4,000 of these things in the store and they sold out because they had a closed loop and iterative process. And so if we can take information and allow people to access it multiple ways through different devices and different screens, that can be very specific information that, you know, we remove a lot of the engineering data, but bring the end user product conceptually to somebody that would have had to wait months to get the actual physical prototype and we can get feedback. Well, we can have a better chance at making sure whatever product we're building is the right product when it ultimately gets delivered to a customer. That's so it's really, it's a much larger market that has to be thought of rather than just the kind of selling a box of software to an engineer. Now, that's a great story. And, and again, it's got to be exciting for you guys to see that and, and with the added resources that you have at PTC. Um, so let's talk, I promised people we were going to talk about Atlas. Let's talk about the platform a little bit. Atlas was announced last year. Atlas, for those who don't know, it's a SaaS based platform. It purports to go beyond product lifecycle management. And you, you're talking cloud-like agility and scale to CAD and product design. But, but John, you could do a better job than I. What do we need to know about <laughs> Atlas? Well, I think Atlas is a great description because it really is metaphorically sort of holding up all of the PTC applications themselves. But from the very beginning, when John and I met with Jim, part of what we were intrigued about was that he shared a vision that Onshape was more than just going to be a, a CAD authoring tool. That in fact, you know, in the past, these, these engineering tools were very powerful, but they were very narrow in their purpose and focus. And we had specialty applications to manage the versions, et cetera. What we did in Onshape is we kind of inverted that thinking. We built this collaboration and sharing engine at the core and then kind of wrapped the CAD system around it. But that collaboration, sharing and versioning engine is really powerful. And it was that vision that Jim had that he shared that we had from the beginning, which was how do we take this thing and make a platform that can be used for many other applications inside of, inside of any company. And so not only do we have a partner um, application area that is, is much like the App Store or the Google Play Store, uh, that was sort of our first instantiation of this, this, this platform. But now we're extending out to broader applications and, and much meatier applications. And internally, that's the thing works in the, in the augmented reality, but there'll be other applications that ultimately find its way on top of this platform. And so they'll get all the benefits of, of the collaboration, the sharing, the versioning, the multi-platform, you know, multi-device. And that's an extremely, extremely um, uh, strategic leverage point for the company. You know, it's interesting, John, you mentioned the seaport before. So PTC, for those who don't know, built a beautiful facility down at the seaport. Uh, in Boston. And of course, the, when PTC started, you know, back in the mid 1980s, this, there was nothing at the seaport. Uh, so right. it's kind of, kind of ironic, you know, we, we've, we're see, we, we've seen the transformation of the seaport, we're seeing the transformation of industry, and of course, PTC, and I'm sure someday you'll get back into that beautiful office, you know, full, can't wait. <laughs> but yeah, I'll bet. And, uh, and, and but I want to, 
I bring this up because I, I, want, I want you to talk about the future, how you, how you see that our, our industry, and you've observed this has moved from very product centric to, to plat, platform centric with, with SaaS and cloud. And now we're seeing ecosystems form around those products and platforms and, and data flowing through the ecosystem, powering you know, new innovation. I, I wonder if you could paint a picture for us of what the future looks like to you from your vantage point. Yeah, I think one of the key words you said there is data, because up until now, data for companies really was sort of trapped in different applications. And it wasn't because people were nefarious and they wanted to keep it limited. It was just the way in which things were built. And, you know, when people use an application like Onshape, what ends up happening is their their day to day interaction and everything that they do is actually captured by the platform. And you know we don't have access to that data. Of course, it's it's the customer's data, but as a, as an artifact of them using the system and doing their day to day job, what's happening is they're creating huge amounts of information that can then be accessed and analyzed to help them both improve their design process, improve uh, their efficiencies, improve their actual schedules in terms of making sure they can hit delivery times and be able to understand where there might be roadblocks in the future. So the way I see it is companies now are deploying SaaS based tools like Onshape. And an artifact of them using that platform is that they have now analytics and tools to better understand and, and instrument and manage their business. And then from there, I think you're going to see because these systems are all, you know, extremely well architected and allow through, you know, very structured API calls to connect other SaaS based applications, you're going to start seeing closed loop sort of systems. So for example, people design using Onshape, they end up going and deploying their system or installing it, or people use the end using products. People then may call back into the customer's support line and report issues, problems, challenges. They'll be able to do traceability back to the underlying design. They'll be able to do trend analysis and defect analysis from the support lines and tie it back and close loop the product design, manufacturer deployment in the field sort of cycles. In addition, you can imagine there's many things that are sort of as designed, but then when people go on site and they have to install it, there's some alterations, modifications. Think about, think about like uh, large air conditioning units for buildings. You go and, and you go to train and you get a large air conditioning unit that's put up on top of a building with a crane. They have to build all kinds of adapters to make sure that that will fit inside of, of, of the particulars of that building. You know, with Onshape and tools like this, you'll be able to not only take the design of what the air conditioning system might be, but also the, all the adapter plates, but also how they installed it. So it's sort of as designed, as manufactured, and as installed. And all these things can be traced. Just like if you think about the transformation of customer service or customer contacts, in the early days, you used to have tools that were PC-based tools called contact management solutions, you know, kind of ACT or Goldmine. And these were basically glorified electronic Rolodexes. Right. It had customer names and they had phone numbers and whatever else. And Salesforce and Siebel, you know, these types of systems really uh, broadened out the perspective of what a customer relationship was. So it wasn't just the contact information. It was, you know, how did they come to find out about you as a company? So all the pre sort of marketing and then kind of what happens after they become a customer. And it really was a 360 view. I think that 360 view gets extended to not just who the customer is, but also the tools and the and and um, the products they use, and then of course the performance information that can come back to the manufacturer. So you know, as an engineer, one of the things you learn about with systems is the following. And if you remember when the CD first came out, uh, CDs they used to talk about four times oversampling or eight times oversampling, and it was really right. kind of you know the fidelity of the system, and and. We know from systems theory that the best way to improve a performance of a system is to actually have more feedback. The more feedback you have, the better a system can be. And so that's why you get 16 and 64x sampling, et cetera. Same thing here. The more feedback we have of different parts of a company, the better performant the company will be, better customer relationships, better uh, overall financial performance as well. So that's the, that's the view I have of how these systems all tie together. It's a great vision and your point about the, the data is I think right on it used to be so fragmented in silos and in order to take a system view, you've got to have a system view of the data. It's not, I mean, for, for years we've optimized maybe on one little component of the system and, and that 
sometimes we lose sight of the overall outcome. And so what you just described, I think is, I think sets up you know, very well as we exit, hopefully soon we exit this, this COVID era. Uh, and John, I hope that you, know, you and I can sit down face to face at a, at a PTC on shape event uh, in the near term. It was, in the seaport. <laughs> in the seaport would be, be, I tell you, that'd be a great facility to have, a, have an event for sure. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. There. So, so John McElhaney, thanks so much for, for participating in the program. It was really great to have you on. Great, thanks Dave. Okay, and I wanna thank everyone for participating today. We had some great guest speakers. And remember, this was a live program. So give us a little bit of time. We're gonna flip this site over to on-demand mode so you can share it with your colleagues and you, or you can come back and, and watch the sessions that you heard today. Uh, this is Dave Vellante for theCUBE and Onshape PTC. Thank you so much for watching Innovation for Good. Be well, have a great holiday and we'll see you next time. Thank you.